Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 74 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm coming at you from Virginia. And I'm recording from Scotland. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. I've, um, <laughs> can you tell, I've got my, my big light on because it's already, I mean, it's actually blue skies today, but it's, what, 4.30 and bad. it's still getting a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look bad at all. Well, I don't know if our reader, our readers, <laughs> our listeners, viewers can tell I'm actually a different part of my room, so. Yeah, I guess you can see it's, the... It's a little different. You can see my stack of fabrics over here. Mm. They're just fabrics, not finished bags. No, they're not finished bags. They're fabrics. Just, so just I have plenty a sl- of fabrics. slightly different view of your, of your studio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, how's it going? Yeah, okay. Um, we're Scotland... For the next three weeks, we've got a slightly more more restriction. Some um, count, council areas have been moved up a sort of level on our five tier restriction uh, okay. map. Um, so they've been moved up to the highest tier. We haven't. We're the second highest, but we're not. We're it's, we're now not permitted to leave our local authority area. So we can't leave Edinburgh. It would be illegal. Unless for essential really? reasons, yeah. So you can't you can't take a train down to London no. to visit family. No, I mean they're in lockdown That's as stance. well in England until the second of December. Uh-huh. So, well, would the trains even be running? Uh, between? Yeah, I mean, because there's the if you um, are working, you might still you could still travel. Um, okay. Yeah. So okay. there are still reasons, like, like you know. Sense. People could be moving across the sort of local authorities here in Scotland for yeah essential reasons and things, um, but uh, or if they're in a lower tier than us, they're still allowed to oh. move around a little bit more. So yeah, and how are you? Um, we're good. Um, I was gonna say something, but I it's completely <laughs> blown out of my head, so I don't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, well then, will we do our Buzzfeed quiz? <laughs> sure, let's just jump right into the BuzzFeed quiz. <laughs> so the short title is, What Cheese Are You? And the long title is, Want to Know What Kind of <laughs> Cheese You Are in Your Soul? Just answer a few random questions to find out. <laughs> uh, and this seems uh, appropriate to me because I had cheese for lunch. Just like cheese and crackers. Yeah, cheese, just cheese. Well, lots of oh, cheese. We had cheese a and crackers. blue cheese, a brie cheese, maybe, maybe it was camembert, and cheddar cheese. And some fancy gouda gouda type cheese, or as Sam would say, gouda. Gouda. Uh-huh. <laughs> he he he. Uh, so, what kind of cheese are you, sweetie? So, I'm a kind of cheese I didn't eat today. Feta cheese. It says you like feta oh, cheese. Oh, and you don't even like feta yeah, cheese. Yeah, it's not my favorite. You're a sensitive person who often crumbles under pressure. However, you always find a way to pick yourself back up again. I would say I'm a medium, like, I, I wouldn't, no, I, I wouldn't say I'm a sensitive person that crumbles under pressure, but I would say I do sometimes crumble under pressure, so it's not that I never have. When there's a lot of pressure, not just, like, a little bit of pressure. Well, two times in a row, we got something different. <laughs> I am cheddar cheese. You're like cheddar cheese. You're an extremely popular person with tons of friends. You're just a joy to be around. <laughs> Classic. Um, okay, if you say so. <laughs> I'll buy it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so we must so, have some different questions, or answers in here. Answers. Um, let's see. What's your favorite color? So I picked dark blue. And I think you picked teal. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a good, um... You know, it was close between those two. A dark blue and teal. Yeah. Mm. What about the books you like to read? So 
is a weird mix. So because the options are romance, fairy tales, I like all books, mystery, adventure, biographies. I probably oh. most enjoy. I don't know. I would have said before historical fiction before, um, but I think maybe I read slightly more of a broader range of books. But I put romance because that's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I said I like all books because, like, yeah, uh, like you, I do like historical fiction. I like a bit of mystery. They don't have, like, sci-fi. I guess that would be in fairy tales. Mm, yeah. So I just said I like You do books, quite a bit of mystery, isn't quite don't you? true. Yeah, like poli police procedurals, yeah. that type of things. I guess that's mystery. Mm -hmm. Uh I actually had a hard time with what do you do in your spare time? Oh, I I, I was just honest. I said watch TV. I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> so do I because social socializing I like to do, but it's not actually in my spare time because you have to schedule that. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. So. But then at the same time, like, if, you know, I guess, it's what you might do in your spare time around like work or you know stuff you have to do at home mm. well i i picked watch tv so <laughs> we picked the same thing all righty yeah i gotta silence my phone sorry um this wasn't very long no it was nice oh favorite tea. subject in school so i i picked math because i think I think I liked that. Like that was one of my favorite subjects. Yeah, actually, that when was, I was definitely your school. favorite yeah. when you were in school. Not at college. I but. picked. <laughs> they didn't have art, but I picked science because mm -hmm. I did like science. Mm -hmm. Just not chemistry, <laughs> which is kind <laughs> of like the like picture. Chemistry. The picture for science is. I know. I like biology and you know and geo you know physical science and well, I guess chemistry is technically a physical science anyway know. but you know like geology that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. and biology yeah uh i didn't do as well in chemistry hmm. so yeah that's why i'm cheddar cheese and not feta cheese <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've come to like feta cheese a little bit more now but it's yeah not my favorite cheese it has its uses it does that Fine. salty goodness mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about some whips? Sure. Um, shall I go first? Sure. Okay. I have a new whip. I always go to the new one first. <laughs> this is, I'm not, I'm not super happy with how it's turning out, but it's, it's called Night Blooms by Melissa Clulo of Espace Trico. Mm -hmm. who we met at Edinburgh two years ago, three years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Um, and it looks like, what does it look like? I've already forgotten what you said it's called. Light blooms. Light blooms? Okay, I don't have a picture. Night. night. Night as in day and night. The evening night? Yeah. Yeah, day and night. Okay. I'm going to guess that it's a sweater. No, it's a hat. Ah, color work. <laughs> it's a color work hat. And I just, I decided that I was just going to just, just knit something small and knit a hat. And I wanted to only use either leftovers or, you know, stuff from my stash. Mm -hmm. So I had some leftover, this is Crystal Palace, like, mochi or something like that and it's it's a long can you see it mm -hmm. you can't really see it because yeah. it's really dark um it's a, a long um striping and it's oh. it's got two two colors wound together so it's like a barbell pole oh, okay yeah so and um so that and and then plus some ella ray something or other that i had lying around so it's so i'm not sure i so it's, I mean, it's definitely um, a long stripe. That's what I was trying to say. Mm. Like a, you know, self-striping. So the LRA, is that, a, what color is that? 
the it gray. looks gray in the screen, but it's actually like a lilac. Okay, and then the self striping one has a combo. It looks like a base of purple. It's, it's purple and green and orange and yellow and mm. and so like this part right here is blue and green striped together. Mm. Uh huh. The part I'm working on is a blue and red, not striped, twisted together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it looks kind of purpley. Yeah. But it's not really showing up very well. Maybe after I'm done with the hat and after I block it, you'll be able to see the the patterning the better. Yeah. But right now it's really hard to see. Mm -hmm. It's just I feel like the contrast it's not high enough. Even though if there's not enough contrast, even though when you look at it like this, there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess because you're seeing all the colors. Together in the mixed yarn yeah. together at once so it's you know it's just it, it's a free pattern mm -hmm. so what what so, is do you know what the actual motif is supposed to look like is it like um no oh she says it's it's uh the fabric created is reminiscent of the flocked velvet wallpapers of yesteryear okay I mean, it's definitely very geometric. Mm. Yeah. So I I thought you would you, because there's some solid bits of of the um the contrast color that it would you'd be able to see the self-striping yarn, but I guess it's not solid enough. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I stepped away, maybe you can see it better. Yeah, a bit. You can't see but... it. It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm hoping maybe after it's, after I block it, you know, I I, I wet block it, mm -hmm. especially my um, stranded work. So I'll wet block, block that. And if it looks better, great. If it doesn't, who knows what I'll do with it. Tear it out and start over again. I don't know. So that's my new whip and my Second whip is the French shawl, F A L E I. I don't even want to attempt to pronounce that because you know I'm gonna butcher it. So I just finished the second part. The no, I guess it would be the third part where I am finished fading the second color with the first color, and now I'm at the part where I just started, so you can't really see it where I'm just using the second color, which is the birthday yarn from Dances with Wool. Mm -hmm. So I'm super happy with it. It's very speckly. You can kind of see, yeah. It's, oh. the, it's funny that the camera that you're looking at, it doesn't, you really can't see the difference. Mm -hmm. But the camera that I'm recording off of, you can see the difference between the two colors. Yeah, in case so anybody's curious own... what our setup is, it's because... <laughs> We talk to each other on one device, record on another device, and then look at our notes on a third device. <laughs> yeah, that way, that way, the the device that we're recording off of doesn't pick up the audio from the person we're speaking to. Yeah, from the other person. Yeah. So those are my two whips because I haven't even pulled out my sweater yet. I think maybe I did one row of that just float sweater that I'm making for myself. Mm -hmm. I just got tired of doing sweaters. Yeah, so yeah you've been doing a lot. lot. I've been knitting a lot of sweaters. Mm. So what do you have, sweetie? So I'm still working on my uh, short cake, strawberry short cake top, which is by uh, Natalie, Natalie McHale. And it looks nothing like strawberry short cake. No, because I've picked, Natalia, sorry. Um, I picked a dark green and a light green. So, much more than what I had last time. I've yeah, got, look at that. So I've started, it's from the top, and I've got the sort of uh -huh. front down set sort of oh, to the, the armholes, and I've started on the back as well. Um, so, it's so wait, I thought the back was higher than the front? That's why you had to do short rows? Or no? No. Uh... That was my, the blurred lines does that. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, so this, it's a raglan 
sleeve, sleeves, even though there's no sleeves, but like that's the construction. That... It has a sleeve cap. Yeah, so, sort of, yeah, Maybe. just barely, because it's going to be a, a tank top sort of style. Mm -hmm. um, so... You're very stripey today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're wearing, wearing a black and white and... striped shirt, yeah. and your project is striped, and it's it, it's it's a little like this. My screen's kind of going, ooh, going crazy. <laughs> uh, so I think, did I mention last time how the different sides look quite different? The front and the back, the right yeah, and wrong the, side. Yeah, the inside so and the outside. you can see it a bit yeah. better now. So this is what I've done as my right side. And then mm -hmm. that's the wrong side. So the wrong side, the light color is more dominant. And yes. The right side, the dark color is a little bit more dominant. Um, and well, I think it's more even uh, on the right side. If I feel like on the screen it looks like it's yeah, more Yeah, I, I think it's just it's just color play, really. Because like, cause technically they, they are exact opposites of each other. It's just the way mm. that the colors play off of each other. I think because the bright color is so much brighter. So because it's bright and it stands out, even though there's less of it, it kind of balances out to yeah. make it seem even. Uh -huh. um, and... I, I could have done an opposite and made that the right side, like if I just swapped the order that I was doing the yeah. striping. So the only thing is, is um, at the moment, because I've sort of split for the armholes, I'm just doing it back and forth. And she gives you the option to either cut the yarn or you can just, you know, carry the yarn through. But it means there's no stretch because the yarn's if all you inside. Carry it. Yeah. But then cutting the yarn seemed silly because that's just there's so many rows and all those rows you'd have you'd have ends so the, you know the chances mm. of things sticking out it just made more sense to carry it in um so you can't do it um do it in the round at this point no because what well, the armholes oh you're not you're not there yet i mean so basically so will you so the, does it go in the round I'll put it after on. the armholes i think so <laughs> So, so, but if you cut it, you only have that bit from, from here to here. To so here. I'm working from, so all of these, that is all the ends of the rows. So if I cut it, I'd have ends all along here. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the, the way that you could do it so that there wouldn't be any, you wouldn't have to do either, is to change colors every other, like I did for my swatch. So you'd have bigger mm -hmm. stripes, which I considered. Yeah. And this is the one mm -hmm. where... Well, it looks different on both sides as well. Um, well. That makes a nice bib right now. Makes a nice <laughs> oh, bib. <laughs> but yeah, so because, <laughs> because I don't know if you remember, <laughs> I'm kind of fudging the, the, ga the gauge is off, so I, I'm doing a different size. And, and now I'm, I'm just sort of like calculating, just doing the math of like how many stitches should I do it? How many rows should I do it? Just kind of based off of my gauge. So I've done it slightly different. And I don't know if, actually this is going to be too this is too narrow like if my my boob is too uh, much on show in the armhole uh, so i thought maybe i would do less straight rows so it would be more like that and start the armhole increases sooner just to keep it tighter to my uh, to yeah. myself so that's what i'm going to do for the back so i think it's bo it's supposed to be pretty much the same front and back and then maybe undo this which is annoying because i already cut it cut the yarn but undo that and just shorten it uh, well that's the beauty of doing things top top down that you can like try it on mm. as you go um it's harder to do that when yeah. it's in pieces and i think it, it, it makes sense that that that's something that i would have find myself having to do to make it fit nice because i'm short <laughs> yeah because well like when you're sewing a pattern right here that's um like usually where you can lengthen or shorten. Yeah. Like there's like right the chest, yeah, like right here chest. there's usually like a line here where you can either, you know, cut it and then make it longer or just fold it over to make it shorter. So here and then here in your you know, in your midriff area also. So there's like different places where you can adjust. Yeah, so I might just undo that. Because otherwise when when you don't have the yarn going through it, this is uh, herringbone half double crochet it's actually a really stretchy mm -hmm. stitch both horizontally and vertically because crochets uh, normally mm -hmm. 
not as stretchy, not as stretchy. horizontally and more just stretchy vertically. But it's pretty stretchy both ways when there isn't yarn stuck inside. <laughs> um, and this is actually, I turned 30 last weekend. And yes. one of my, my birthday present from my mother-in-law was a yarn bowl. And it, the colors go very well together. They, they, really, they do. That's what I was going to mention, that you that he, you hit a big milestone oh. last week. Yes. <laughs> I yes. had my, my... So I can't say... Um, what was it? People used to say... You know, I would say like, oh, I, ha I had her really young, but not, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter how young I was, <laughs> unless I was 10 when I had you. <laughs> you can't be in my 40s anymore. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I mean, well, you just tell people that I'm not actually 30 and that I'm only 18. I don't you know if I can get away with that. Although I was thinking that whenever I meet new people, here they tend okay. to ask me oh, are you studying and I think uh -huh. you know it's it's partially because I look young but also because I'm a foreigner like I'm not British uh -huh. so they just assume oh yeah. she must be at university so I'm trying to I, I was trying to think how old I would have to be and look like before people stop asking me that <laughs> <laughs> once you start getting those grays <laughs> um in your hair and then just my other birthday present from you was one of your Pearl and Plum yeah. bags. And uh -huh. w w I don't know if you've actually named this, but it's just sort of like a little yarn that basket. That was the Leah. The um, Leah, yeah. So at the moment, it's got my uh, hooked ribbon um, yarn that I'm doing the placemats with. Mm hmm because I kind of forgot right. that I told my friend I was going to do that for her. And I did tell her it was going to take me a while because, you know, I was just going to work on it in the background. I've decided I should uh -huh. probably finish it for Christmas. So I've done two more. You I've got, still have time. Yeah, I've got two more to do. You're over a month. <laughs> but yeah. then I kept I kept trying to pick it up, like, in the evening after we did our pub quiz. Um, uh -huh. And we we'll would just watch a few shows before bed. And because, you know, we're winding down and this is not a very complicated project. I figured that's fine. I'll just work on that. But then I just like, because it's been so long since I picked it up, I've forgotten how I'd started them, like how many chains and like mm -hmm. where I put the last stitch of each row. And so I had to put, I like, I started doing like, no, that's wrong. It's too big. And I, no, that's wrong. So I had to put it away and just think, I worked on it today. I set some time aside to be like, I need to go back and to like reverse engineer what I'd done. And it shouldn't have been that complicated, but yeah yes yeah, so that's so you really like nice. well you didn't write notes did you write notes this time uh i, I have a chart I, I, I drew myself a chart but i've only got two more so to do so hopefully i'll just do that and then it'll be done <laughs> <laughs> somebody's trying to scratch her way in sushi yeah sushi. um and then the last thing which i haven't actually started yet but because i mentioned it last week about how my work's doing that 2020 year in review book thing and I thought I might do something mm -hmm. data based somebody uh Sarah who's at save the planet the planet k-n-i-t uh, -huh. uh she sent me a <laughs> she sent me a link to um uh, a pattern on Ravelry Heather Stiver's dumpster <clears throat> fire Emma Groomy pattern and it's literally just like one of those green dumpsters <laughs> fire and it's like a little box and you can put things in it which I thought was funny um, but I, I think I'm still going to go the sort of data side of things. So I've decided instead to do, so I have this mood map that I've been keeping track of in my uh -huh. bullet journal of my moods uh, or at the end of every day. So the reds are very happy and the blue is very sad and the green is neutral. So you can see that <laughs> lockdown happens <laughs> and coronavirus and it's kind of skews more green neutral versus the beginning of the year. The first two months I had quite a few red and uh, yellow days and uh, quite a few uh -huh. less um, now. Although I still have had some. <laughs> um, and so I figured because I've been tracking this every day this year that that would make a good like... Um, base for my 
submission and I'll st still crochet something, but I thought I would do it kind of like um, a temperature scarf. But the temperature is, mm. yeah. Okay. So I've got like, I'm going on a sort of green theme. So I've got oh. white to a sort of limey mint gray and then this one that looks so you're very... not using you're not using those colors that you picked no um because this is just the, color, the yarn that i have um and i think that mm -hmm. if i did the colors in my journal it would just I, I probably wouldn't wear it because of the red like i don't think those colors would all look, look good together okay um, so so is white the neutral uh yeah i think i think so <laughs> I, I can't remember why i decided <laughs> or maybe yes yeah, I don't I, know. You didn't tell me. I think maybe if I make white the neutral, and then the gray and the dark as sad, and the okay. dark color is um, it's the really dark teal, like bluey from my kite, uh, distant sh star shawl, the kite shaped one. Oh, so uh -huh. it it looks really dark, but it's that sort of dark, um, teal. I don't know what color, but bluey. And then these would be maybe the happy ones. The bright, like, sort uh -huh. of chartreuse and mint. I'll, I'll tell you so what wait, the yarn so actually is. So those are all say. fingering weight? Yeah, they're all, f they're all fingering weight. Are you going to be able to finish in time? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if I can't finish in time, then I'll have to submit maybe the, the picture of just the uh -huh. the thing in my book <laughs> with the start of my scarf but I, i'll I'm, I'm just gonna do a simple scarf i might not just might not do like super super simple like not just a granny stripe or just double crochet or something so i've got my stick one of my stitch oh. dictionary so i've just been having a look to find to see find some possibilities that was a possibility that, Double crochet V stitch, but I I I think I'll probably do something that's quite solid. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta get cracking soon. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, so the 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 tank top as well is for uh the bipoc now. I think that ends uh -huh. that ends at the end of the December? year maybe. So <laughs> oh, I've given up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have any FOs. I do. I have two. Two. Um well one one isn't like a full FO. It's like a half FO or maybe a quarter FO. But it's something I finished. Uh, oh, I forgot to bring the other one in. So I posted on Instagram. I think it was on my personal gram. Um, these sock tubes that my friend cranked for me. Mm -hmm. And, oh, shoot. I, I was going to. I have her card here somewhere. I don't remember. Or not. Because I am not organized. I thought I had. Had everything I needed but she is you can, you can put it right here right <laughs> <laughs> no I will find it because I posted it on Instagram and that's not that hard to find okie dokie she is Clayville Fiber Arts so her Instagram is Babnitz, B-A-B-K-N-I-T-S. And she has, so if you, I think um, if you go to her, her um, Instagram, you can send in your skeins of sock yarn and she, she cranks out tubes like this uh. for you. Mm. And um, so, but she also had some um, sock yarn that she got in, Cones, and so she just sold these. Very Christmas. It was only half. It is a Christmas sock, so so that would I, just be self striping yarn, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a self striping. So I fin I finished the second <laughs> foot. I don't know where the other foot is. So, but no, carry. Sorry, carry on. What? 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 No, you finish. So, I did the first foot right. Mm-hmm. Everything is good. It's all hunky dory. It's a, it's a sock, and it looks like a sock. I had to because I have wide feet. Um, so you cut you cut into the into where you want the heel. You know, as after you throw an after top mm-hmm. heel. But before I did I did that. I so the tube. It's live stitches on both ends. I'm not exactly sure how the physics of that <laughs> works, but anyways, live stitches on both ends. So I took the stitches from one end, brought it to the top, and I made myself a rib. Ah, so that was it. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? I don't understand. So, so when when the sock when the tube was like this but longer, I took the the end from this side and I brought it to here <laughs> and, and then I knitted a rib and then cut knitted it. the cu- uh, the cuff oh, yeah, and then yeah. cut it <laughs> and then and then I got to the got to the heel did the heel and then I found out where I wanted to start the toes the, the toe part and I cut it put it on my needles but then because you know the nature of having wide feet mm. you really stretch it out <laughs> when mm-hmm. you put your sock on it's like oh I cut it too short. So mm-hmm. then that meant I had to knit back up where I wanted the toe to start de- the decreases. Right? right. So the, I mean this is this is a machine knit. Uh-huh. It's a you know sock machine. So the 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 gauge is teeny tiny. So I tried to <laughs> match that gauge. So I was yanking on the yarn and just making it really tight. And but you know I think I I did a pretty good job. It's it, the 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 um the gauge looks if not perfect. I mean it's not perfect, but it looks pretty close. And I haven't even blocked these. Uh-huh. So, so did did the decreases, and then I did the, the the grafting, and then I went to the second, the second sock, and I started doing the thing. But I I got in such a habit of yanking on the yarn and making my gauge small. I was like, oh, and I showed and at knitting yesterday, I showed my friend like it's, <laughs> it's a lot shorter like the the cuff because. My gauge is so much tighter. And then she looked at it like, yeah, you, you can really tell how loose one, one is versus the second one. And then she said, did you mean to do a two by two rib on one side and a one by one? <laughs> how how do you I do did that? Again. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shoot. So... What I'm going to do is, since I've already woven in the ends on the first sock, um, I mean, it's a, it's a completed pair of socks. I could wear it out, like now if I wanted to, just the, the ends have to be woven. So I'm actually going to pull out the really tight one by one mm. and then knit it back on looser <laughs> as a two by two. <laughs> so we should probably count how many times I've actually I was going to say, you, you could start like a... <laughs> A custom line of socks, but the thing is that the ribs are different, and then that's like your thing. That's like that's a design element, like stupid design <laughs> element. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, there I counted the rows, like when to start the heel, and then I counted the rows. When that's why there's so many stitch markers on the second sock. Mm-hmm. When to start the toes, so they're like perfect, except for the rib. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. So now I can knit really tight now if I want to. <laughs> but you know, most of the time it's so. There's no reason wh- how do you feel so about tight. using sock tubes to make socks? It's like, wow, I finished socks so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're gonna get like, if you were a prolific like gifter, sock gifter, that would be handy. Mm-hmm. Cause then, yeah. May I do have a pair of mismatched socks that I bought from that sock lady in new hampshire mm. from that crafts craft show a few years ago so there are people that do that hmm. you i am them. i'm wearing the socks oh, so the ones i sent over yeah 
Yeah. So now I have, I have, this is what I have left over. Uh-huh. It's not quite enough for a pair of socks, but it, I mean, it is enough for a pair of <coughs> shorty socks. Uh-huh. <coughs> Excuse me. If I use a different yarn for the, the heels toes and cuffs right right but it's like what's the point of having shorty socks that look like this you can't see it because it's in your shoe so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just make these into the legs and i'm gonna i'm going to pick Uh, up stitches and then make the foot you know i'm gonna i'm gonna make the foot out of a completely different Mm -hmm. yarn so you can still see how pretty it is Mm -hmm. you could you could do one red foot one green foot (laughs) (laughs) i could because that's not really the, the color yarns I have. I do have, actually, I do have one. I mean, it, it's kind Christmas. Of a, it's Christmas colors. Green. I know, but I don't have red yarn. Mm. I have green yarn. Okay. Yeah. I'd have to go out and get it. <laughs> so that's my first FO. And my second FO is a big one. Ta da! Yay! So, so um,. This is the Arboreal by Jennifer Steingast. And last time I misspoke her name um, as Stephanie Steingast. Oh. It's Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I still, I still have to weave, weave in the ends. But I was so excited to get it off the needles and have a block that I just threw it aside and forgot about it. And I started other things like, oh, wait, I still have to weave in all these ends. <laughs> oh, very good. So I'll do that. I'll do that while we're watching TV tonight or something. Mm-hmm. So. So, yeah, those are my FOs. And um, before we move away from our fibery goodness. Uh, so I showed you the first. This is the first. Uh, sock tube. Sock that um, what, what, Barb cranked for me. What, what's the colors? And it's. I. I, I was like, oh, shoot, I forgot to take a picture of it before I gave it to her. And I had a look in our old um, show notes mm-hmm. to find it. And I took a screenshot. Okay. It's just, I don't know if you remember this. This I got this at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool, like, Three years ago, four years ago, something like that. So the time I went with you. And it's, no, you didn't go with me that time. I lost it. Where'd it go? Um, And it's just, it, it's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like mad for colors or something like that. But it's so neat because it's like, there's a blob of green, there's a blob of purple, Mm. the blob of the red. And it's like, and you have no idea how it's going to turn out. And I bought it because I was like, I'm just going to go outside my comfort zone and buy something wild and crazy. I don't know if you remember I said that. And you said, what are you going to do with that? I "I don't know. I just kind of liked it. And um, this is what it looks like when it's all cranked out. I mean, you can see there's like in between, there's the green stripes and then there's the pink stripe Mm -hmm. within the green stripes. And then in the purple stripes, there's the black. And it's just all perfect. So, so that's so amazing. I'm just. And then, so like, I guess if it. if you happen to be knitting something else with it, it wouldn't necessarily pull like that. No, it would look something Could look. completely different. It was, I think, it was it was called swirls or something like that. Mm-hmm. The the name of the the colors that she. Um, it, it's um I know for sure it's a Boston based Kingy mm-hmm. dyer. You can put that right here <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the all the all the crafty yarny stuff that I've been up to. So I have some yarny okay. bits and bobs. You do to announce on the podcast. I already put it on Instagram. <gasps> oh yes, <coughs> yarny bits and bobs. I guess it is. Okay. Da, 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 da. So I am making a brand new crochet magazine. What? Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> You're the editor in chief. Yeah, the publisher. So, so <laughs> basically, over the summer, maybe even before that, like it, it's an idea that's popped in my head a few times. Like the idea of making a like a high end magazine for crocheters. 
because there definitely exists, as is this proof. There are like indie knitting magazines that are, you know, uh, knitting that are, yeah, knitting, but that, you know, they're, they're high end magazines on like thick paper, um, and you know, with beautiful photography, um, a real emphasis on garments and accessories in lovely yarns, like lots of indie yarns. Um, and it just, it just doesn't really exist for crocheters. You get pom pom, which has some crochet patterns in it, but it's still, I mean, I think most people would pick that up and say it's a, yeah, it's a magazine for, for knitters. Um, and I mean, I've got, you know, my, you've got your other crochet magazines as well. Like I love inside crochet. Um, but it's just, it's not the same thing. They're, they're, they're magazines, but they're kind of worlds apart. So yeah, I think that that's a type of magazine that just doesn't exist for crocheters. Um, and as much as I love, you know, amigurumi and blankets and things like that, I want to focus on sort of garment making and, and shawls and accessories and things. Okay. Um, so I've gone public with it. There's an Instagram and it's called Morit. So it's M-O-O-R-I-T. And that is, um, it's a word to describe a certain color of Shetland sheep. It's sort of a brown, ranges of brown. Um, and it's a word that comes from Scots, which I really liked because I live in Scotland. Um, and it's sheepy. Um, and I just specifically wanted, I, I played with names that had more of a crochet focus on it. But in the end, it felt almost a little twee to pick like a super like crochet -y name like it felt like I was tr like I don't want to have to try so hard to be like yeah it's crochet because because knitters don't have to do that like you know all the, all the knitting magazines pom-pom you know it, it's sort of generically craft and wool and things like that Lina making stories it's just it's about it's about making and it's about craft it happens to be knitting so I kind of wanted this to be you know about wool and about making and it happens to be crochet um so that's par partially why I picked the name Morit um so so yeah so I've, I've been holding on to this information for a while and I decided for my birthday that I would pick that as the day to tell the world about it so <laughs> it's Morit Mag on Instagram and so you can follow it on Instagram you can sign up to the newsletter on the website which is just moritmag.com um, and so I'm still in the process of working on the magazine um, and so there's still a bit of a journey to go but if you follow on Instagram or you know subscribe to the newsletter you'll be the first to know as things update and progress and things. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was definitely like even just I've been planning on you know releasing this information in public and so like not, not exactly launch it but you know tell start telling people about it and then it was a little nerve-wracking just because i just like who am i to <laughs> just decide i'm gonna make this magazine and like what am i doing and and as soon as i you know tell more than just my friends and family it's like no i've, I've kind of sort of committed to like actually doing this <laughs> or trying to do it <laughs> sort of um, yeah i mean I could, I could still fail right <laughs> not that i'm going to um but yeah, well, I mean, you actually have a publishing degree. I do. I have a publishing degree, so super relevant. Um, and I worked in publishing for a little while in Boston, book publishing, but the program that I um, did my master's in had like a sort of magazine strain and a book strain. So I went down the book track, but I had, you know, we overlapped and um, got some magazine publishing knowledge in there as well. This is and so I think, exciting. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm really excited and like, I think it's, it's just so crazy to think that this is where I've found myself, like, because basically because we decided to do a podcast. Oh, yeah. it, I think it all, it always just comes back down to it. We decided to do a podcast and then suddenly like, you know, all these things have all this sort of, stuff. Yeah. Fallen into place. Well, or, or you could say that I put, I put a hook in your hand when you were 10 years old. Yeah. You could say that as well, but I think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. so. so I can tell my friends now too, right? Yeah, you can tell your friends now too. <laughs> uh, the family have known about it because you actually posted it on Instagram. 
So I I mean the extended family. Obviously, mm-hmm. your immediate family have known for a while. Mm-hmm. So Madeline was like, "Wait, what? What? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, that's there's not much <laughs> more I can say for now except to stay tuned and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is very exciting. Did you have any shop talk? Uh, um, I have a little one. Um, I've stopped making Christmas bags because there's only so many I can make. Mm-hmm. Unless somebody really, really, really wants one that I've sold out on, I don't think I'm going to make any more. But I did order this new fabric. Bye. And I'm still making... <clears throat> making these bags but they're so cute because it's got two things that I love it's got oh. cats <laughs> and and they're knitting oh, and geez. so this is a oh this is a 90% completed because I haven't put the ribbon in yet mm-hmm. and the, and the, I think the pat fabrics that I picked to go with them are absolutely perfect yeah they like they so, look like they came from the same look, line look like they're yeah, they do. Especially this one, which those dot thingies look like they could be balls of yarn strung <laughs> together or pom-poms. Oh, or it's something. so cute. So I'm super happy with the, this. I did buy plenty of fabric, so I think it makes them for myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, um, so I've been working on these. There's, there's a few in the shop, and there'll be more in the shop, especially after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to take a break for Thanksgiving. I'm excited about Thanksgiving because Madeline will be home. Mm-hmm. So I'll have at least one kid with me. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, we're, we're doing the Thanksgiving meal as a mini thing. Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> I think we might have a Thanksgiving chicken. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I think there was in the news, uh, people were talking about um, smaller turkeys and how stores don't like everybody's looking for smaller turkeys yeah. <laughs> and stores don't have turkeys because you know they they had when they had to hatch the eggs you know months and months ago they didn't know this was going to be a thing so like the turkey farms like yep yeah, but would you like to have half a turkey instead <laughs> like, okay so that that's been a thing people mm-hmm. have been buying half turkeys uh-huh. instead of a whole turkey mm-hmm. so i just bought a turkey breast i figured uh-huh. yeah so i'm super excited that Madeline will be home so she'll be home her school is they had planned this in the summer um that they're just gonna close school for thanksgiving week and then not have the kids go back until january so that was always planned but there have been a lot of schools that like our friends their kids have um like last minute decided okay we're gonna shut down now like the week before thanksgiving because the numbers are going up i think Mm -hmm. madeline school there has only been 10 cases throughout the whole semester so Mm -hmm. that's not bad i mean it is a small school yeah Uh but still but um so they've been doing a good job Mm -hmm. keeping track track of all that and you know keeping the kids safe so i'm pretty confident that she well she is getting tested before she comes home so Mm -hmm. but yeah so yeah so that's pretty exciting. I'll have a quarter of my children at home, so it's only be half of us here in Virginia, and the other half will be spread to the winds, you know, <laughs> Scotland, New Hampshire, and Miami. Mm-hmm. But will I do my spiel? The yep. spiel. Spiel away. Oh, before we spiel away, um, I want to wish all of our American subscribers a happy mm. Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Eat lots of turkey. Or if you're vegan, eat lots of fake turkey. I'm good with that, too. (laughs) Righty. So you can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. You can follow us on Instagram at kcacypodcast as well. Um, And you can subscribe, like, comment, follow, whatever, on YouTube or iTunes or wherever else you get your podcasts. Um, and you can join the Ravelry group if you so, are so inclined. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn in the group tab. Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry yarn. Bye. <laughs>